So good uh, afternoon already. Uh, thanks to the SLTC for the opportunity and to all of you for being here listening. Uh, I would like to share with you this study we have done in, in our company. <coughs> We've been doing in the last year a lot of marketing of leather and helping a lot of the tanneries to market the leather because we believe that the leather industry needs a lot of promotion. We have a lot of attacks from other industries and uh, we, we believe that we need to show the good properties of leather and this is one of them, the, the antibacterial property that the leather can have. So just a brief uh, description of, uh, all of you know what the vegetable tannins are. They are uh, polyphenolic uh, complex uh, uh, molecules that are contained in many vegetable species. <coughs> and the term tannin refers to the use of oak to uh, stabilize uh, animal hides. Uh, in nature, uh, tannins are uh, almost in every plant. Uh, of course, they are exploded industrially in plants that contain a uh, high percentage of tannin and plants that are very common, like uh, we do in Italy with the chestnut or in Argentina <coughs> with the braccio. Uh, naturally, they are uh, created by the plants to defend themselves, so they are natural antibiotics of the plant. Uh, the plant uh, creates tannin to uh, defend against insects uh, against the uh, unfavorable, as a reaction of uh, unfavorable uh, climatic conditions. And they are also biostimulants uh, for in the agriculture. They, they promote the growth of the plant. Tannins are uh, very effective to complex uh, protein, like uh, when we tan leather, they are astringent. They can bind uh, all polyphenols. They have uh, chelating properties to metals. They are uh, fantastic antioxidants. And uh, in this case, we are talking about the bacteriostatic or the bactericide effects of, of, uh, of tannins. The main sources of industrial tannins, uh, these are the ones uh, we produce, uh, are uh, quebracho, which grows in Argentina in the Chaco area, in the north part in the border with Paraguay. Chestnut, mainly in Italy and Slovenia, and uh, Tara, which uh, exclusively grows in Peru. Just a small uh, explanation about the sustainability of the production of vegetable extract, because again, we had many attacks in the past that uh, tannins uh, uh, producers are choppers of the forest, and uh, in fact, the production of tannin is very sustainable. And the more tannin you produce, the better is the forest. In the case, for example, of Tara, we grow our Tara in the desert of Peru, so what is more sustainable than growing plants in the desert? Uh, it's a very good sample of uh, sustainability. And we have the studies for the sustainability of the production and the certification for all, the, all our production. The applications of uh, tanning is not only for leather. Uh, still today, uh, leather tanning is the main application, but the other sector are growing very fast and probably within the next five years, we will sell more natural tannins for oral application than leather. It's used in the food and beverage as an antioxidant on the wine. We make about 300 tons of tannin for wine, uh, uh, as an additive for wine. And if you consider that less than one gram per bottle is used, you can calculate how many millions of bottles of wine contain our tannin. In the beer, uh, for stabilizing the foam, it has some pharmaceutical application, cosmetic. Animal nutrition is the biggest use uh, after leather, and this is growing by about 1,000 ton every year because it's replacing most of the antibiotics in the, in the feed. Uh, in some countries like the United States, they are changing the regulation and they are prohibiting the use of antibiotics in the feed, so they will use more and more tannins. In the agriculture, as a biostimulant, for the plant grow and also for, for treatment of plant uh, to replace the pesticides in some uh, species. And there are also very wide applications. Uh, we are now developing a lot of natural foams which use tannin as a monomer to make uh, polymers to replace, for example, insulation foams uh, of polyurethane. But uh, today I'm going to talk about the, this property that uh, veg tan or veg retan leather has, which is the antibacterial property. 
Uh, all this, uh, I start backward on how we started to do this. We started collaborating with a small shoe factory in Italy. And they have a niche market. They work mainly with people having problems of allergies and problem of uh, bad smell of the feet. Uh, bad smell of the feet is not a subject people like to talk about uh, very openly, but it's a very common problem. And um, it's a very big potential for our leather. Uh, and not only for classical shoes, but also for sneakers. We have, uh, after this research, we have many contests for many brands, and they have a lot of interest in this. Um, the bad smell, which is also the technical term, is uh, bromohydrosis, uh, is produced mainly by the action of bacteria on the sweat, on the fatty acids of the sweat, that will develop uh, free fatty acid, which will have a bad smell. So we studied uh, how uh, beige tan or red tan leather inside the shoe can uh, help to solve this problem. And what we did, we did three types of study. Uh, the first study is a study in vitro, uh, which we did uh, uh, with the University of Milano, comparing the antibacterial properties of uh, beige tan leather, chrome leather, and synthetic uh, lining material, uh, the reaction of these materials with gram-positive and gram-negative uh, bacteria. Then we did uh, research uh, in vivo using the panel of people wearing shoes uh, with the lining and the insole made of these three materials. And at the end, we made an experience uh, with also people in vivo uh, wearing safety shoes made of uh, synthetic uh, material against uh, leather. So the vitro research was done uh, in collaboration with the University of Bicocca of Milano, uh, the pharmacological and biomolecular science department. And uh, we make a quantitative analysis on the, the reaction between vegetable tan leather, uh, synthetic material, and chrome tan leather against two types of bacteria, which represent, in general, the world of bacteria. Uh, and we took Escherichia coli, which is representing the gram-negative bacteria, and uh, Staphylococcus aureus, which represents the gram-positive bacteria. The experiment is uh, quite simple. We inoculate discs of uh, leather or synthetic material with the uh, known amount of uh, bacteria. Uh, and then this is uh, neutralized uh, and is extracted. And then we count the, the number of bacteria compared to the original inoculation at the time zero and after six hours of uh, incubation. Uh, the, there is an official method for uh, the antibacterial properties of material, and the material is antibacterial if there is a reduction of at least 90% of the original bacterial inoculated. <coughs> if there is uh, less than 90%, the material is not antibacterial. There is uh, an American method for the textile industry, and there is also an ISO method for this test. And here is the result uh, uh, with Escherichia coli. Here in, the, in each column, we have uh, every material. So the first one is uh, synthetic uh, material used for lining of shoes. Uh, we inoculated to all the materials about one million um, units of bacteria. Here we have a chrome tan leather. This is a veg tan leather. And this is a chrome tan leather we tan with veg. So with an inoculation of one million, we have this uh, uh, line here is uh, zero time, so we just inoculate and extract immediately. And the top line is after six hours. In the case of synthetic leather, we have uh, one million inoculated bacteria, and at zero time, it already doubles. And in six, uh, six hours, it goes from one million to 2.2 billion, so it's two and a half thousand times uh, propagation of the bacteria. In the case of uh, full chrome leather, also there is uh, immediately uh, eight times grow of bacteria, probably because at the beginning the bacteria find some of the fat liquors or nutrients that can grow very fast. And after six hours, it has about five times the original dose, 
So the reduction of bacteria is uh, from time zero to time six hours is only 44%. <coughs> so it cannot be considered antibacterial. In the case of veg tan leather, uh, at zero time is uh, bacteriostatic, so it's more or less the same bacteria we inoculated. And after six hours, practically, it's uh, only 100 units from 1 million originally with 100% reduction of bacterial activity. So this veg leather can be considered antibacterial. And in the same case, the same chrome leather will have a reduction of 98% of bacteria, so it can also be considered antibacterial. The same experiment we did with the Staphylococcus aureus, which is a more sensible bacteria, so the, for it's, it's a, it has a higher effect uh, to kill the bacteria because it's only a one cell membrane, one membrane cell uh, bacteria. And in this case, it's uh, uh, we find the synthetic material, it's even worse than the Stericarichia coli. So it goes from 1 million to 7,000 million, 7 billion, 7,000 times more. In the case of full chrome leather, it's also antibacterial uh, with the Staphylococcus aureus, which is more sensitive than the Scherichia coli. And of course, the veg tan leather and the chrome leather retan, they are all 100% antibacterial. <coughs> So concluding this first part of the research, we can say that uh, vegetable tanned leather it has excellent antibacterial properties with both <coughs> Escherichia coli and Staphylococcus aureus. Chrome tanned leather is, it has antibacterial properly only with the Staphylococcus aureus, but not with Escherichia coli, which is one of the most common bacteria. Uh, and the chrome tanned leather retanned with veg behaves similar to a veg tan leather. So if we retan with vegetable extract, the chrome tan leather, it would be antibacterial to both types of bacteria. And the synthetic material uh, is not antibacterial at all. Then we conducted a vivo research with uh, this in collaboration with the University of Bologna. Well, Micro is a spin-off of this university. And they made a qualitative and quantitative analysis on two different uh, shoes uh, uh, that the, they were worn by people, uh, a panel of people, and comparing shoes made of insole uh, of uh, veg tan leather and lining veg tan leather as compared to synthetic. And then after using the shoes, we made DNA analysis to see what was happening in the bacteria population. Uh, the, the, there were 15 people doing this experiment uh, of the age between 18 and 65, both female and male. And each person wore, uh, we prepared special shoes. So the left shoe was made of synthetic material and the right shoe was made of vegetable tan leather. So it's on the same person, right and left, like when we do the trials, we cut the height into two and we do one product length on the other right. And for 28 days, uh, we have people wearing these shoes. And after 28, a sample was taken by a sterile swab. And uh, on this swab, we make a DNA analysis of uh, what was happening with the bacteria population. And the interesting thing that, uh, that we have seen, as in the vitro uh, study, <coughs> the, the test is uh, the proportion of antibacterial material, which <coughs> is the leather, and the bacteria inoculated is in favor of the leather. So the leather behaves as an antibacterial. In the case of the shoe, the dynamic is different because you have a sweat, you keep wearing the shoes, it's like an incubator. <coughs> so in this case, it works, the material can work as a regulator of the bacteria. So we have that in the case of synthetic leather, the bacteria that was developed produce short volatile acid which are responsible for the odor. And, uh, we will see the typical bacteria that is causing this. And the vegetable tan leather inside the shoes uh, favored the growth of more uh, physiological bacteria of our, of our body. In fact, the synthetic uh, lining and insole favored the growth of bacteria such as Brevibacteria, Micrococcus, and Ketococcus which are known to be bacteria responsible to producing byproducts with a very bad smell. And um, the veg tan leather 
created or uh, promoted the development of physiological bacteria, which has no other pro uh, problem. Actually, uh, this study, we have now a new uh, part that we are finishing, that we are studying the direct emission of the shoes, so we are uh, measuring the smell by gas chromatography, and there are some very interesting results. Uh, then the third study we have done is of uh, people wearing safety shoes. We have uh, given to a number of 29 men working in the factory, provide them with the shoes with the insole made of vegetable tan leather as compared to synthetic material. And they wore uh, this in the summertime for four weeks. And after this, we made a questionnaire to see the, the sensation of what they thought about the, the feeling they had wearing these materials. And again, here the results are quite interesting because we have uh, about 86% per, percent of the people uh, have a better perception of the, the shoes uh, with the vegetable tan leather material. They have a much better comfort. 76% uh, of the people found that the, the shoes with the leather material have much better absorption, so the shoe was more dry. About 48-50% of the people uh, declared that the synthetic material had a very bad smell. Then we have another 42% that they didn't find much different on the other because probably not everybody has a sweating or a smell problem in their feet. And there was also a strange 10% that said that the both feet uh, were smelling, so probably these are more pathological people or they have the same strange idea. This is the result that came out. And in general, on the sensation, uh, comparing the two material, uh, people wearing the, the beige tan the leather material, only two people were talking about uh, shoes with the bad smell, and on the other hand, we had 16 people on the synthetic material. This light heavy was just the general sensation was very similar. The comfort on the beige leather, the main objective was uh, comfortable shoes, while in the synthetic material was uh, uncomfortable shoes. Uh, on the leather shoes, 18 people said they were, it was uh, the fresh, it was the sensation, while in the synthetic material, the main sensation was the heat produced by the feet. And the same regarding dry and wet on the veg leather, the, the feet kept uh, dry, most of the people gave this uh, perception, while the synthetic material was more on the wet and uncomfortable. So as a conclusion, we can say that uh, from the vitro research, uh, we can say that tanning used in the production of the vegetable tan or retan leather can destroy more than 99% of the bacteria responsible for the odor of feet, of the bad odor, and they have an antibacterial action. Uh, this material can also be certified. This is of the interest of many of our customers. They want to certify their leathers as uh, to be an antibacterial and it's not only interesting for the people making shoes, we have a lot of people making, for example, phone covers, because the uh, phone is an object you keep always in your hand, and sometimes if made of leather, it will have a smell. If you have it made with vegetal leather or wheat and leather, you avoid this problem. And even in the automotive, we have some requests, although the, some automotive leathers are finished, uh, a lot of them are punched, and uh, we spend a lot of time in the car, and in this, in this case, the leather acts as a filter in the car and keeps the, the atmosphere more healthy. Um, on the other study in Bologna, we can conclude that the tiny news in the production of the leathers prevent the development of those bacteria responsible for the bad odor, and they promote the growth of other bacteria, which are the physiological bacteria. And in the case of the safety shoes, 75% uh, of the people believe that the material, uh, the leather, the shoes made with leather material uh, absorb much better the sweat, uh, the, the shoes are more fresh, dry, and comfortable. Here are just a few references if you want to go deeper into this subject, and I thank you very much.